All right, next um, we are going to have Matthew Summerskill, who you will remember earlier from the President's Award, come and talk about his work with the Mobile, mobile Diabetes Clinic. And I believe we also have a video to share. So let's welcome Matthew. The primary objective of the Mobile Diabetes Clinic is to really elevate the health status of people living with diabetes and, and at risk for diabetes. We target First Nations communities and we know that if we can increase access to specialist care and to overall health care, then that we can prevent many of the complications associated with diabetes further down the road. When we think about things like amputations and kidney disease, mental health, if we can increase people's access, which is what our clinic does at health fairs, at annual diabetes clinics, at follow-up phone calls, at one-to-one -one visits. If we can reduce barriers to care, we know that we have played a role in embettering people's health long-term. Someone with diabetes, to get access to a diabetes clinic or to a kidney clinic, you have to make an appointment with someone in Vancouver or in Prince George. What we bring is our service on wheels. So we have a lab, so when people come to see us to get their blood done, we process those results, sometimes within six minutes or sometimes within 45 minutes. My favorite part of working with the Mobile Diabetes Clinic is the ability to be able to work with people and the opportunity, I guess is the better word, to work with people um, to help improve their health, but just sort of walk with them on their journey to getting there. It is their, their journey, but I'm able to sort of support them to give them the tools or, or maybe the way to access um, things that are often difficult for our community members that are especially who are really remote. You know, being able to go to the communities and being able to, you know, do all the point of care testing right there and then. It helps us make those connections um, with our patients through various um, resources like our phone, Zoom, video calls and stuff like that. That's the other part of the, um, uh, that I really like about this job is how appreciative all, all the members of these communities of these um, different nations are. It makes me want to go back there. All the love and appreciation that we get from the, from the community's members, you know, being able to make a difference in their lives. Normally, um, somebody in a, in a non-mobile diabetes context would have to access all of those appointments over the course of a couple months. And so when we talk about breaking down barriers, we're talking about bringing services to people. Instead of always waiting for someone to book an appointment with us, we actively outreach. We know that health is very linked. We know that good health care must be holistic in nature. When we, when we sit down with somebody with diabetes, First of all, we have to gain trust. We have to build a relationship. But along the course of that journey together, mental health comes up, kidney care comes up, substance abuse may come up, sexual health may come up. If we take all those categories together, we start to build a holistic picture of health, right? So it may be that somebody wants, they want, they want somebody to help them to bring something up with their doctor. We can be that person. It may be that, that, that somebody just needs someone to talk to. Even today, they ask me questions about how I'm doing. I wasn't doing too well, and I let them know why. At least I can let somebody know. Whereas when you, I call it living out in the bush, you don't always get somebody to support you in whatever way you're feeling, or to give you, mm, pointers on what to do maybe. Like the other day when I wasn't feel I was feeling worse than today and they asked me if I wanted to get mental health or assistance. And I said no, just then talking to me is okay to bring me back to point one and what I should be doing. Yeah. And they're doing a wonderful job and to keep it up and hope to snag more elders than me. <laughs> so the, with the Mobile Diabetes Clinic, it allows us to learn about people's culture. It allows us to, to experience different geographies. It allows us to help people gain an elevated health status. And if that doesn't bring joy to 
one's heart, then I don't know what else would in this job. Thank you. Denise Sakuze Skyze, Masai, Matthew Summerskill, Director of the Mobile Diabetes Clinic. Thank you, Communications, for doing that short clip for us in the, at the Notley Health Fair recently. This represents a, a short piece of what we do. And first of all, I'd also like to acknowledge the any hereditary chiefs in the room and also the traditional territory of the Clay Lee Tene, for which we're doing our business. Again, thank you, Karina and Warner, for the President's Award and that recognition and others in this organization that have relentlessly trailblazed and inspired others, Maasai, Maasai. Congratulations again, Warner, on your outstanding honorary degree, and I couldn't think of anybody more deserving. In, in nursing, I also would like to acknowledge, and can't help think about the trailblazers before me, um, Barbie Scaling, the late Sarah Hine, and the massive undertakings and commitments that they would have had to overcome in their lifetime to get, where, to, to, get to where they have come today. Maasai to the late Sarah Hine spirit and Maasai Barbie Scaling. Do we have that, that PowerPoint in here? There we go, sorry. So the Mobile Diabetes Clinic has had another busy year, crisscrossing the northern region, delivering culturally safe screening, education, and prevention services. And for those of you who don't know, it's important to point out that our program has the largest geographic service area of any CSFS program, spanning nearly 70 communities and over half of British Columbia, 10 in, the, 10 in the interior and 60 in the north. The territory is vast and our work so important. So every year we reflect back at these AGAs and we ask ourselves, did we accomplish what we set out to do? It can sometimes be hard to pick the most notable as there are se several layers of both individual and collective goals that can essentially have an impact on shaping health outcomes. Most notably in the last year, we strove to increase our service reach in many ways, but captured of them are three here. Firstly, we doubled our CSFS encounters, meaning an increasing number of people were requesting our service and additionally, many more we intentionally outreach to. Secondly, the number of CSFS clients gaining access to cutting edge diabetes technology has more than doubled. This is significant in our field of work. Thirdly, time spent per client continues to increase. We know rushing people through healthcare does not improve quality healthcare. And we also ask ourselves, what are we the most proud of? And I had this discussion with one of our team members the other day, and that is not only, that is inspiring our clients to not only access healthcare, but to demand healthcare, quality healthcare, no matter where they live or who their doctor is. So our current priorities, we must maximize technology at every angle, and we have been fierce advocates of diabetes devices, no matter the barriers, because the benefits for many have been life-changing and for many more life-saving. Yes, there are barriers to devices and medications that government tries to impose, but barriers that we can overcome with advocacy, partnership, and perseverance. Secondly, we must continue to lend our support to those who need it the most. To do that, we must double our, our per-client encounters for those with multiple comorbidities, and we are already seeing the benefit of doing that, meaning more repeat contact with the same people, and meeting, meaningful repeated outre outreach leads to positive health outcomes. Thirdly, we must always be remindful of trauma-informed care. Given the ongoing legacy of colonization and recent discoveries, part of offering good sensitive care is care that comes with knowing our own history and getting to know our clients and community's history. That means appointment, an appointment is never 15 minutes, but allowing for 45 minutes to an hour. Finally, 
we are ever conscious of our mission statement, whose origins stem from leadership in the late 1990s, who advocated for a service like, like ours because, it, because the need has always been there. Leaderships from the likes of Sandra Chigi, Mabel Louie, Warner, and numerous others links, linked to the Chief, Chief's Health Committee of the time. So our work today seeks to honor those original ideas and aspirations and to elevate and influence health outcomes in any way we can within our, within our given capacity. And here is just a quick snap of some of our staff members representing um, a number of the regions which we deliver to today. And what always, what, what always stands out as a strength to me is to have representation of culture on your team. So not only First Nations, but the South Asian and Filipino, because communities enjoy learning about us just as much as we enjoy learning about them. It gets back to that whole idea of reciprocity. Nurshana and Marikar here have been particularly active in CSFS communities. And finally, November is Diabetes Awareness Month. Every month is Diabetes Awareness Month for us, but November is officially it, and we will be active in Carrier Sikani communities with our diabetes clinics. Masai, thank you. <laughs>